to pro or not to pro? That is the question. But as much as I want you to stay till the end of this video, I also have an easy answer. Most people will be happy with the iPhone 13, period. But I get it. Human nature is to want the best. And these phones are the best that Apple currently has on offer. So now that the buzz has gone down and the hype dust has settled, with more than a month of use behind my belt, having also tested Apple's iOS 15.1 update, I'm confident that I can demystify the iPhone 13 series and help you find your perfect match. Hi, I'm Michael Josh and gadget matchmaking is what I do. This is our iPhone 13 Pro and Pro Max review. We're going to assume that you found your way here already leaning towards getting a Pro model, but just in case you need a refresher, here's what going Pro will get you and what I think about it. The Pro series is intentionally more sophisticated, from a more classy color palette to a matte finish on its back, which contrasts nicely against its glossy stainless steel bands. These phones scream premium, as long as you use them sans a case. But let's be honest, 90% of us will use a case, and with one, the stylistic differences are hardly noticeable. And while you're looking, notice you get three cameras instead of two. This one over here, that's a dedicated 3x zoom lens. I love telephoto lenses, I always have, especially while traveling. I enjoy the versatility of a phone that lets me zoom in. Speaking of cameras, since last year, only the Pro models could take Pro Raw images an uncompressed image format. Pro Raw provides even greater flexibility and more info to work with if you're the type who will usually spend some time editing your photos on a program like Lightroom. That feature is still limited to the Pro series. This year though, Pro phones also get support for a Pro video format called ProRes, an uncompressed format that professionals prefer. Notice this other dot on the camera bump? You'll only find it on the Pro models also. That's a LiDAR scanner, based on the same tech used in self-driving cars and automated robot vacuums. Right now, it's there for better focusing in the dark and for improved performance in augmented reality apps. From Pokemon Go to Lego Hidden Side. Recently, I also saw it used in some new home gym equipment that, unfortunately, I can't tell you about yet. But I have a feeling there's more to it than that. Something to do with a mixed reality headset that Apple is rumored to be working on. When you're swiping around your home screen or on apps like Twitter, you may notice that scrolling is now silky smooth, thanks to the Pro Series' ProMotion display, which now has an adaptive refresh rate, which switches between 10 hertz all the way to 120 hertz. Now, tech fans are quick to point out that this is a feature that's long been on Android phones, and that is true, but personally, while I can live without it and will still argue that some folks might not even notice it, it's a welcome improvement, especially for a phone that's called Pro. While across the board, the iPhone 13 series benefits from the new A15 Bionic chip, the Pro models actually have slightly better specs. It's just that Apple doesn't publicly disclose this. The Pro models have more RAM, more GPU cores, and now come with a one terabyte storage option. That extra RAM will come in handy when you're multitasking. For example, switching between Safari and Instagram and a photo editor and TikTok and maybe a game you're playing. It means that when you switch back to Instagram and that draft of the story you haven't posted yet will still be there. Less memory sometimes means that when you come back, Instagram has already cleared that data from its cache, so you have to start over. That more powerful GPU will come in handy when you're shooting and editing in ProRes or Dolby Vision straight from your device. Speaking of ProRes, if that's the format you're going to be filming videos in, you're going to want that one terabyte storage option because files are massive. How big, you might ask? Six 
gigabytes for one minute of footage. Because of that, don't even consider the 128 gigabyte model because you're limited to 1080p ProRes footage. A consistent theme from Apple this year is choice. And speaking of choice, now's the perfect time to talk about this video's sponsor, Phone Navigator by Navi. If my job is to help you find the right device, Phone Navigator's job is to help you find the best deals, which, trust me, can be quite a challenge to weed through manually. Free phone on us. Discounts with trade-ins. How can you really know which deal gives you exactly what you need? That's where Phone Navigator comes in. This tool searches thousands of deals across the market to help you find the best ones for you. Let's get started. I've already set up my account. It's a free service and I've already taken the survey so it knows I own a 12 Pro Max to trade. Shh, I know I already own a 13 Pro Max but let's pretend that I don't yet. So it looks like if I stay with T-Mobile, keep my magenta plan and trade in my old phone, I only need to shell out $99.99 and it comes with an iPhone forever upgrade, which means I can trade in my old iPhone for a new one every two years. Or I can switch carriers and it seems like I can also get a new iPhone for $99.99 if I switch to Verizon. I'll need to switch to a premium unlimited plan, which starts at 80 bucks, which is what I'm paying right now. I like that even if my screen is cracked, they'll accept the trade-in. By the way, Navi takes into account the trade-in value of your current phone into account, so it only shows you the deals that you qualify for. Because Verizon is the only network that gives me full bars where I live, Maybe it's time to switch. And speaking of time, Phone Navi has saved me lots of time by helping me figure all of this out. If you're looking to buy a new iPhone today, give it a whirl. Visit yournavi.com. Now back to what I was saying about choice. We've seen this recently with the new 14 and 16 inch MacBook Pros, and the same is true with the iPhone 13 Pro and Pro Max. For the first time ever, you don't need to get the big one to get the best one. So which one should you choose? This consideration boils down to three factors. Granted, it's a legit concern that a phone as big as the Max might not be as comfortable to use. But here are my two cents. Yes, the 13 Pro Max is a big phone. Yes, it's heavier than last year's model. But I'm here to tell you this. It's not about how big your hands or how small your pocket. You will eventually get used to the size of your phone. Sure, one-handed use might be more difficult on a bigger phone, but I don't think it's going to get in the way of the experience. What do you do most on your phone? And are these activities better accomplished on a bigger screen? If you play lots of games, watch a lot of videos, or prefer large fonts, then you will benefit from this bigger display. But again, I don't think your experience will suffer if you choose otherwise. So finally, this is the tiebreaker, perhaps. By virtue of its larger size, the Pro Max has a larger battery. So sure, if you care most about long battery life, there's your answer. While the 13 Pro is long lasting, I'd say the 13 Pro Max will last longer, about 30 minutes to an hour on average. Following that setup, let's talk more about battery life a bit. Apple claims the 13 Pro and 13 Pro Max will last two and a half hours longer than previous models. But because battery consumption is different from person to person, and I don't think there's really a fair way to compare this new phone with an older phone whose battery might not be as good, instead, maybe I'll just take you along with a day in my life. Good morning, guys. It's 9 a.m. and I've just taken my iPhone 13 Pro Max off its charger at 100%. Mornings for me start with lemon water and coffee. Sometimes oatmeal. Usually I'll use my mornings to catch up on my YouTube subscriptions, 
Then, if the weather is good, I'll head out to my patio to catch up on messages and social media. Once I've taken care of me, it's about 10 a.m. and I need to get to work. So I move to the office and put away my phone. Today, however, I have an appointment with my therapist, so I decide to take the 50-minute video call outside because the weather is just so nice. Shortly after, I head out to meet Chai to film my next video. We meet at this nice coffee shop called Blank Street. By the way, it's pumpkin spice season. The rest of the afternoon is spent at Domino Park filming the new pixels. Okay, we're done filming and I have a very important errand that I want to take you on. I've been wanting a Von Moff ever since I reviewed the bike and today I'm finally getting one. I use my phone to set up the bike because it's a high-tech one. And I leave a happy camper. And then we head out to the city. When I'm out and about, I have 5G enabled on my phone. And whenever I get the chance, I'll catch up on messages from friends and stay on top of work emails. I like filming around the Oculus. There's plenty of art everywhere, and the city has a very different feel to Brooklyn. We spend several hours here filming lots of photo comparisons. And before I head home, I think I need some food. Hey guys, so it's the end of my day. It's close to 10 p.m. so we've been using the phone for about 13 hours now and it's at 6%. I did the math earlier. I've uh, been using the phone on. Screen on time is about seven hours and I've been shooting a lot of 4K, ProRes video, cinematic mode, taking a lot of photos. A lot of heavy use today. I need to hit the sack soon so it's going to be on the charger. I guess suffice to say the phone lasted a heavy day of use and got me through the day. Subjectively, based on how I use my iPhone, I can say that I have noticed an improvement. But to be honest, since I charge my phone every night while I sleep, what's most important to me is that its battery can get me up to the moment that I set it down on my MagSafe charger. And on most days, that's the case, but I know you're a heavy user like me, and there are some days where I've killed my phone before the end of the day. Heck yeah, the iPhone 13 Pro and Pro Max feature all new camera hardware across the board. So even if the 13 has great wide and ultra wide cameras also, the 13 Pro and Pro Max have even better ones. The wide camera has the largest sensor on an iPhone with an f1.5 aperture and sensor shift for in-sensor stabilization. The ultra-wide camera also has a new larger sensor that's 92% better at light gathering. It also doubles as a macro lens, allowing you to shoot subjects as close as two millimeters away. And finally, a 3x zoom lens, and now it supports night mode. All that said, it comes as no surprise that the camera bumps on the 13 Pro and Pro Max are large and in charge. That's the price you have to pay for some of the best cameras on a smartphone today. Now, with that set up, let's go ahead and take a look at some sample photos. Okay, I rarely do this, but it's rant time. I have a lot of feelings, so bear with me. If you've ever used an iPhone before, you might wonder why when taking a photo, the camera app will noticeably shift. See what it did right there? This happens a lot. For example, one morning I was trying to photograph my almond chocolate croissant. What's actually happening is that the iPhone thinks you're trying to take a macro photo. So it's automatically shifting from the wide camera to the ultra wide camera so that it can get into macro mode. In principle, I like that users don't have to think about these things. But when AI makes such bad decisions, you could end up with a photo like this when you could have had a photo like this. 
Even worse is when you're trying to take photos and it's dark out. Wouldn't it make better sense to use the camera with the largest image sensor on an iPhone? Here's a screen recording of that behavior again. Now, most users will not know better and will just hit the shutter button. This is the resulting photo. Now here's what you get if you know better, you're patient and insist on using the wide lens. Thankfully, with iOS 15.1, Apple allows you to turn it off with a feature called Auto Macro. But it's tucked away in Settings, Camera, and it's turned on by default. Until AI gets smarter, it should be turned off by default. And don't worry, it's not gonna mess with that auto switching when you're already in ultra wide angle mode. It's just going to stop the camera from switching from wide to ultra wide when you don't want it to. New to the iPhone 13 series is a feature called cinematic mode. Not to be confused with video bokeh, which we've seen on Android phones before. Instead, cinematic mode is inspired by a filmmaking technique called rack focus and is used to tell a story by guiding a user's eye and attention onto a subject without the need for dialogue. But in the right hands, it's got a lot of potential for some movie magic. There are already a lot of great examples on YouTube, as well as a more in-depth discussion by filmmaking professionals. I'll put all the links down below. Now, before we end this chapter, I want to read you something which I scribbled down a few weeks ago in response to naysayers. It was supposed to go into its own video called A Rant About Cinematic Mode. Here's what I wrote. As great as the iPhone 13 series is, a filmmaker does not a fancy phone make. It takes creativity, talent, lots of practice. An expensive paint set is no use to someone without an artistic bone in his body. But imagine what someone with raw talent might be able to pull off. What the iPhone 13 does is that it puts the right tools in the hands of more people, and it makes complicated cinematography tricks easier for the average person to pull off. So if you think that cinematic mode is just a gimmick, you're missing the point. The new iPhones come with iOS 15, which brings with it some nifty features. I'm not gonna go over every single feature, but here are two of my favorites. You might have seen this TikTok video where a student copies their classmates' notes just by taking a photo and converting it to text. While I do not condone cheating, I think it's also a funny example of how live text is going to be a game changer. Because really, copying text off photos is so easy now. When taking a picture of text, just look for this icon and just select and copy the text that you want. And now with Universal Clipboard, you can get on your Mac computer, hit paste, and the text is waiting for you there. You can also copy text directly off any photo you may have previously taken. Perhaps the most exciting feature of iOS 15 was delayed and wasn't available when the iPhone 13 series was launched. But good news, SharePlay is now available on iOS 15.1, so definitely go and update. Apart from being able to share your screen with friends during a FaceTime call, you can now watch videos or listen to music together while on the call. This is how it works. Initiate a FaceTime call, tap the Share My Screen icon, this one over here, then launch the Apple TV app. For now, it's just Apple TV, but Apple has a SharePlay API, meaning other apps should be able to support this soon. Then start a movie or TV show. By the way, your friends also need an Apple TV Plus subscription for this to work. If you have an Apple TV, you can also use AirPlay to continue watching the movie on your big screen. With SharePlay, that movie that you're watching is synced across all devices, all participants on that FaceTime call. So there's no need to go, ready, set, Hit play. When someone pauses, everyone else's movie pauses also. The call continues in the background so that you can also react to the movie together. I love this feature and I think it's the perfect way to be alone together. Before we wrap up, while there's lots to love about the iPhone 13, I'd also like to put some stuff out there, things that I'd love to see on upcoming iPhones. One, Touch ID. Bring it back, please. Keep Face ID, but give us Touch ID too. Bake it into the power button like on the iPad mini. Speaking of Face ID, the notch, by the way, is smaller now, and while at some point you stop noticing it's there, 
the tech fan in me hopes for the day that the notch is one day gone completely. I'd love an always on display like on my Apple Watch so that I can glance at notifications even when the display isn't turned on. So are the iPhone 13 Pro and Pro Max your gadget match? I like that now more than ever, the Pro branding on Apple devices is crystal clear. Whether it's the iPad Pro, MacBook Pro, or the iPhone Pro. A Pro device from Apple is designed primarily for Pro users who need the most power and the most advanced features. They also come with a higher price tag compared to their non-Pro brothers. The good news is the technology has gotten so great and with Apple making its own chips, the non-Pro devices aren't a slouch either. Case in point, my entry-level M1 MacBook Air outperforms my top-of-the-line Intel 16-inch MacBook Pro. That's the world we live in today, and I guess my point is, don't spend for tech that you don't need, and rest assured that if you do decide to get the iPhone 13 instead of the iPhone 13 Pro Max, you're not going to get any less of a phone and any less of an experience. So I'll reiterate what I said up top. The iPhone 13 is the phone most users should buy today. Move up to the iPhone 13 Pro series only if you're serious about photography or videography. If you care about things like ProRes video or shooting images in ProRAW, get the Pro model if money isn't an issue and you're that kind of techie who just needs to own the latest and greatest tech. Or get the Pro model if you're the type who upgrades only every five years or so. For example, this year, my best friend Carlos finally decided to upgrade from his iPhone 7. So I told him, don't even think about it, just get the 13 Pro Max and get one terabyte of storage, because I don't know when you're going to upgrade again, and I want you to own a phone that's going to not only last you a long time, but to also have the ability to keep up with this ever-changing tech world. And I think the same applies to you too. And that was our iPhone 13 Pro and Pro Max review. I hope I was able to help you out and make your buying decisions easier. I personally will use the 13 Pro Max as my daily phone. And that said, it also deserves the gadget match seal of approval. Whether you're an iPhone or Android user, you've got plenty of content on this channel for you. So make sure you're subscribed and hit that bell icon so that you get notified as soon as we upload. Follow me on social media for all the behind the scenes fun stuff. And as always, make gadgetmatch.com your daily habit. Until the next video, I'm Michael Josh. Thanks for dropping by.